Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel, my name is Maika and today we are doing my new makeup releases video which is a week later than I normally upload these, I usually try to get them out the first Sunday of the new month um, but yeah, last week you will have seen me film with some new Catrice products which I just wanted to get out like as soon as I could so that's why I decided to like shift some things around so this is pushed back a week but that does mean we've got more stuff to talk about so let's just get talking about all of these new makeup releases and I can tell you for the most part I'm incredibly bored so let me roast some makeup here man there's a lot to unpack because of course I'm a week late and there are a lot of things that were announced and I can already tell you I think there is only one announcement that I know I'm going to buy something from. Leave a comment down below if you want to guess what it is. If you if you are also attuned with the new makeup releases out there, um, because I'm curious to see if you if you would guess it right, um, because it's definitely something that I'm going to have mentioned towards the end of the video. Uh, so yeah, we're we're have to we have to go back all the way to the beginning of April when Dior launched. Um, their uh, or announced a fall collection already birds of a feather and it has a two eyeshadow palettes one with like berry purples and one with like greens and like what looks to be like cocky green teal shades that cocky green teal one does look like something i might like but yeah but it's not until fall so i'm not sure this is going to be out anytime soon um, with Dior, I have found that it's being hyped up quite a bit lately, so I'm not sure what's going on there, but there's just quite a few people who are buying these products and they actually sell out, so I'm not sure what's going on. Dior has also come out with a new highlighter, it seems, um, and the brand I'm actually doing a full face with this month is going to be Dior. Um, not this product, this is not going to be featured. I do want to try and see if I can pick up one of their new bronzers, because I've never tried a Dior bronzer, and uh, yeah, I, uh, I thought I could try that. That's just been announced, so but yeah, these highlighters, I have a Dior highlighter that I love, so I don't need these. Then, um, <clears throat> Be Perfect Cosmetics has announced a new eyeshadow palette, which is about 10 times bigger than what I want to go for. Like these new Alien Cosmetics palettes that I have are nine pans, so that's manageable to me. Uh, but if you saw my eyeshadow palette declutter, then you also know I just got rid of quite a few things and big palettes just don't appeal to me, so this is, this is a no-go. Um, then the BH Cosmetics Remix Dance Collection. I've seen a lot of people uh, talking about this and doing videos with it, and some people have also asked me if I was going to pick anything up. That 2000s cooler toned uh, palette does look nice. It's just that I, I'm still working on trying some BH stuff that I picked up at the end of 2020. This is the reason why I went on a low buy people for 2021. I just brought in so much product in like 2019 and 2020 that, especially in 2020, I was trying new eyeshadow palettes right until the end of the year. So I hadn't even gotten around to trying some of the stuff I bought from Black Friday until like the start of this year. And I still haven't played around with any everything. So that's why I need to slow down and Maybe if this is still around a few months from now and I'm like on a, like there's a bit of a lull in eyeshadow palette land, then I might be able to pick it up, but it's just not interesting enough. In fact, if you'd like to know what I'm wearing on my eyes today, I always leave everything linked in the description box down below. Um, but this is the Lunar Beauty Eternal Eclipse and this is the last look I did with it, but I thought those blues were screaming to be used in a blue smoky eye. And I feel that this palette has a similar vibe to that, only in ter in, instead of blues, it features purples with a bunch of grays and some warmer tone neutrals. So I don't feel that this color story is unique enough to my collection to really make it work. So that's why I'm gonna be passing up on the BH Cosmetics Dance Collection. Uh, Sigma has released a face palette, the Corda Rosa face palette, which, Looks lovely, but it does look like six shades that are essentially all the same. So I'm not sure. And some of these shades remind me of the Natasha Denona Love Cheek Palette. I just tried mine and I absolutely loved it. So I really feel I also have these shades already in my face palette collection. Don't need it. So next up is a skincare product. This is by Herbivore and it's their Cloud Jelly and it's a plumping hydration serum. Now you know that if a brand says that about a product, 
I want to try it. Here's the thing. I still have to try two of my herbivore products that I already bought. It's a more upscale, more higher end um, skincare brand and I have two of their face oils that I really want to try. I have one of their face oils that should uh, sort of make your skin quicker at re like cell growth or like renewing your cells, something like that. And I have one that is more hydrating, which is the Emerald. And this sounds like it might be right up my street, so, but I bought so much skincare at the start of the year that I also feel I don't necessarily feel I need to stock up. However, this is one of those products that when I feel I need to stock up on some skincare, I would definitely be buying this because this is right up my street. Natasha Denona has come out with some new mini palettes in, I believe, an Ipsy or a Boxy Charm. Um, that cooler toned, the, I think it's the Ayana. That does look like something that I might like, but the other ones uh, not, and they are in BoxyCharm, so I'm not sure if these are BoxyCharm exclusives. We don't get BoxyCharm. I don't know. The other one is just way too haphazard for me, the Jubilee, so that one I, I don't want, but the other one does look nice, and I do really like Natasha Denona mini palettes, I now know too, so that could be something that if it would become more widely available, I might be interested in checking out. And then something I hadn't heard anybody talking about yet, but Sleek has come out with some new products. And this looks quite interesting. Um, I haven't tried any new Sleek products in a long time. They have become a little bit difficult to find for me. Um, there are still some Dutch retailers that stock them, but they don't seem to be getting any of the new stuff, it seems. So I would have to go on and order this online, and then it just doesn't look too intriguing for me to really be able to like pick it up and go out of my way to buy it. So thank you, Sleek. I do like that, but no can do. Then Viseart has come out with a new palette, the Soleil La Plage Etendu, which is warm tones with a pop of blue and yellow. I think we've seen this before. I do like the beachy vibes that this gives off. I really like the packaging with like the little parasols and stuff, but this is just not my color story, so. This is not gonna, not something I'm interested in. Colourpop, of course, what is a new makeup releases video without mentioning Colourpop? Uh, they've come out with some eyeliners, it seems, the Mad About You and the Metallic Much. I've never tried Colourpop eyeliners. Are they as some of their other products that they dry out really quickly? Because if they do, I don't want to even pick them up. But it seems to have a couple of good colourful shades, and especially the mattes, that I would want to pick up at some point. However, I hardly ever use eyeliner. Like, this is the first time I think in 2021 that I've used a cold pencil on my waterline. So again, not necessarily a product I need, but I am intrigued enough, but I wish I could buy them separately, I think, because I would only be interested really in like the yellow and like the navy and maybe the green, and I don't really need anything else. So, yeah. Then, also new from ColourPop, are there four pan like four pan palettes that they have come out with in these neutrally shades. This looks really pretty, but it, it contains one metallic and a glitter metallic, which is a metallic with sparkle. <sighs> I don't know. And I also think these color stories just aren't perfect. Like the, the most cool toned one is again pretty plum, and I wish brands would just understand that browns don't just have to be warm toned or neutral, but that they can be cool toned if you mix in a bit of gray. And I just feel that the one that then isn't appealing to me is also very light. So for me, the color stories of these little quads just aren't perfect enough to go out of my way and place a ColourPop order. So that's why ColourPop really needs to make sure that they do something differently here. Um, as I was ordering my Alien Cosmetics palettes, uh, they had also just announced another new palette. Uh, what is this called? I can't read the packaging. Anyways, you can see what it looks like. Um, pretty, but it's got mixed pan sizes and that, that just, my OCD brain can't handle that. So, no can do. One of the releases I was like, ooh, yes, is by Nabla. It's their Skin Realist Skin Tint. And I already mentioned the Ease Drop by Fenty last, last month. And these are actually on my next makeup I'm gonna try. 
uh, to buy for sure. Uh, so I think next month or maybe a month later, I will definitely be buying the Fenty Ease Drop and also this Nabla Skin Tint if they are still in stock in a shade that matches me, of course, because maybe by now they might be out of stock. I don't know. Um, but yeah, this is a release I really want to try. I'm wearing that Catrice Clean ID foundation today and I have low-key fallen in love with that foundation. So um, yeah, I now want to try more of these like really thin but still with coverage kind of foundations because it seems to be something that my skin loves. So that's why this Nabla Skin Realist, yep, that's something I want to try. Then I think a lot of people were already raving about this too. The Hermes Rose Silky Blushes. Apparently they're like, what, 80? No, they're 77 dollars each. I'm terribly sorry. There is one bougie blush release that I might want to try at some point. Not anytime soon, because I just bought like a bunch of blush, so I don't need this. But the shades also don't really appeal to me, so. No, thank you, Hermes. And then I think Zoeva has come out with a new concealer. It's a uh, the Retouch Elixir for an ultra smooth and revitalized under eye area. And I, I'm, I'm really liking this Zoeva rebrand. I have to say they're trying to go a little bit more like natural, clean, like more affordable Glossier, it seems. I'm not sure how expensive these actually are. Um, but yeah, I, I do think that later this year I'm going to have to place myself a Zoeva order and get that eyeshadow palette that they come up with. This concealer, I mean, I used up the Authentic Skin Concealer because I loved it so much. And this looks like something I might also really like. So not anytime soon, but yeah, when I have t t like room in the budget, um, I think I may want to budget in some Zoeva later this year. Hip Dot has collaborated with Reese's. Next. I can be very short and sweet about that because I really don't like those. Uh, KKW Beauty has come out with the Eye Contour Duos. Do we now need cont contouring palettes for our eyes, people? Moving on, next. Um, Too Faced has come out with the Peach Bloom Lip and Cheek Tint. Does Is it just me or does Too Faced releases, do they just not really cause much of a stir anymore? Because I haven't heard anybody talking about these. This looks pretty, but the thing is that this is lips and cheeks. And I, in my experience, these kind of products usually work on one of those areas and never both. Uh, but if I were to spot these in stores, I would definitely want to try like the formula and see if that is anything I might like. However, Too Faced is usually really late to bring things to Europe. It just is. I know some people get mad at me for Catrice and Essence and that I feature them so much and that they want to pick up those products. We have the same thing with US brands, Too Faced being one of them. So I don't think I can try this anytime soon. And then an indie palette, Lois Cosmetics, which is uh, coming out with a new palette, Meet Me in the Underworld. And it has this Orpheus and Eurydice kind of vibe to it. I love the packaging. And then I look at the color story and I'm like, why, why all the warm tones? I wish it didn't have the berries. I wish it didn't have those oranges and like peachy shades. If it had the greens and then the rosy shades and then some cooler tones, this would have sparked my interest so much more. So I now know I'm not buying this, even though I love the aesthetic. I really, really like the packaging, but I know I won't be using a palette like this. And then, of course, another launch from ColourPop towards the end of April, which was the Spring Collection. What is this called? The High Society, Rumor Has It, Cashmere Forever, Too Hot, and Statement Piece. So these are now curated, colorful uh, five pans from ColourPop, and they now seem to have switched over completely to these like square pans, because that's all they seem to be coming out with. I do quite like this, but I'm not sure why they feel this adds anything to their collection because they already have nine pan monochromatic color stories. And I really don't get it. Like, what's the use? If they would have done a green purple palette, I would have understood, but I don't, I don't understand why we need this. I really don't. Like, if these are just as easy to pull out 
and mix and match as the uh, regular monochromatic palettes, I might want to buy all of these and then make up my own palettes as I'm planning to do later this month with some of my ColourPop palettes. But if these are not magnetic and they are glued in, I know I won't use this because I already have these things a million times over in my, in my collection to begin with. Don't need it. ColourPop has also come out with some new brow products. This looks quite interesting, but I have to say, I have now tried a, a brow pencil and a brow gel from ColourPop, and both were my favorite. So I'm wearing that ColourPop brow pencil today. It was actually the last time I could use it. I twisted it up and I was like, oh, it no longer twists up, and then it ran out. So super happy that's now gone because I was a little like done with it. Uh, it's just a little too harsh. It's just, just not the right shade for me. So this looks interesting. This brow, what's this called? Feather Effect Brow Styling Wax. Nice, but that's something I need, I'm sure. Wet n Wild is releasing a SpongeBob collection. I'm too old for SpongeBob. I was too old when it was popular. So I, this is not like an IP that is like really part of my brain. So for me, I don't need it. Charlotte Tilbury has also come up with a new brow product, the Supermodel Brows. Yeah, I, I think that also again, later this year, I may be picking up some new like Charlotte Tilbury stuff because she is coming out with some nice products. And yeah, I think I just wanna try some more by her. I think I really wanna try one of her eyeshadow pots. So yeah. Um, then Floralis official. It's not a new brand, but they have a uh, palette available and it's currently available in the Chinese market, it says. So this is really like a brand announcement, but apparently this is not for sale yet anywhere where I live, but the packaging looks gorgeous. Not sure I would really need it though. It's a bit like that Zishi brand with these like really pick like really pretty packaging that you see all over Instagram. Besame collection, um, Besame Cosmetics is coming out with a Marilyn Monroe collection. Really suits the brand. I think that's a really great launch from them, but Besame I can't buy. So not where I live, it's not available here. Um, then uh, Anastasia has come out with new face palettes. And I looked at this and I was like, that's about like seven years too late. Who else thinks this looks like an Urban Decay release? Like, remember when uh, Urban Decay did like the Naked on the Run and then they also had these naked face palettes that came with like a blush, bronzer, and a highlight? The shades remind me of that. The layout reminds me of that. This is just nothing new to the market. So for me, skipping. Musée Beauty has come out with the Rococo collection. Um, looking at this eyeshadow palette, it seems like Musée Beauty can only do one thing and that's neutrals with some bright pastels. I wish they would come out with a more interesting color story. They did one, but I kind of missed it, and by the time I heard of it, it had sold out, which is their limited edition spring collection. What, I, what was it called, Le Jardin? That was like a nine pan color story. I was like, ooh, that I would have wanted to buy. Sadly, that was limited edition and they're not bringing it back, so can't buy it anymore. Um, Menagerie Cosmetics has announced their collab with Annette from Annette's Makeup Corner and I saw this packaging and I was like, ooh, and I love Annette's content, I really like watching her videos. And then I saw the color story inside it and I did the math in my head and I was like, I wouldn't use that shade, I wouldn't use that shade, I wouldn't use that shade, I wouldn't use that shade. This to me is just a color story I would not be able to work with. Um, and I have just recently bought some Menagerie and Menagerie is incredibly expensive for me to get because they ship by weight. And for me, it's only worth it if I can buy like two or three palettes at the same time, if I add like the shipping and the fees and everything that comes with it. So for me, having just placed my Menagerie order, I'm like, you know what? I'm good. I don't have to get any Menagerie anytime soon. This palette has only like two or three shades. The pink and the purples, those I really like. But the rest, I'm like, hmm, it's too close to other shades I already have in my Menagerie palettes. And that really bright orange in the middle is just completely throwing me off. So for me, it's a no. Ofra has come up with a new highlighter for Mother Earth Day. I believe it has a green to pink duochrome shift. 
seems lovely, but I just declutter a lot of my Ofra highlighters because I figured out I was only really just using one. Um, Glossier has come out with a new cleanser, the Cleanser Con Concentrate, and I'm really intrigued by this. I would like to try this, but again, Glossier is a brand that I think I can only buy if I use a like an external shipping company. So if I have to order first shipped within the US and then to a shipping company and then have it shipped to me in Europe because they don't ship to the Netherlands. They do ship to the UK and France and Sweden, but not the Netherlands. So Glossier, please make your shipping international. Thank you, would be lovely. Um, LA Girl Cosmetics is coming out with one of those larger palettes again. I'm not sure when this is dropping, but it's called the Under the Palm. And this is give, giving me, um, uh, what's it? Urban Decay Wild Wild West vibes. Warm tones with a pop of blue and teal. Pretty, but I already have that palette from Urban Decay. So thank you. Next. Kaleidos is coming out with the Flower Punk collection. And I'm already seeing on Instagram that they're having a lot of trouble with this one. Apparently they are now out of some of the pigments that they need to make the palette. So I think there were already quite a few people who were displeased with how this launch went. Um, I have to say though, that when I first looked at this, I was very intrigued because of the pinks with the greens and that's a nice juxtaposition. And then I saw them swatching things side by side. And some of those turquoisey shades are almost identical to what you get in the electro turquoise. Some of the greens you get in here are similar to their sci-fi greens and some of those like neutrally pinky shades are in the sashimi city so i know that if i put those three palettes together i can create the similar look to this so i don't need this sydney grace is still teasing their temptalia uh collab uh no clue when this is going to come out um but yeah uh, this is something that if once they announce when it's going to be launched then i would be intrigued because temptalia plus sydney grace that's like a match made in heaven and the swatches they have been sharing look absolutely gorgeous uh, but i don't even know what products are going to be out so yeah i first want to see what that line that collab actually entails and then how expensive it is and see when it launches because we don't have any other info than just that they are working on a collab and it should drop sometime soon. That's all we know. All right, then Maybelline has come out with a tinted moisturizer. So here we go again with the skin tints. This is currently available in the US at Walmart. That's where it dropped first. So of course it's going to take another five years until it gets here. Um, I'll be keeping an eye out for this to see if it pops up in the Dutch drugstore. Uh, maybe we are lucky and we're getting it soon. Uh, shops have reopened here now, so I should be able to make a, make my way to some shops soon. I have a vacation coming up too, so I do want to go shopping. And then I want to hit up some drugstores and some makeup counters for sure. Um, Charlotte Tilbury is coming out with a new instant look in a palette. Instant look of love in a palette. Glowing beauty and pretty blushed. And there's one that says Rose Taupe Sparkle, which is the Glowing Beauty one. And I think that's the lighter one of the two. It looks stunning. Here's the thing. I know I won't use a product like this. So how pretty, however pretty this is, and my love for all things Charlotte, I'm, I know I would love this. It's just that this is one of those products that I would try, write a review on, and then I would never try it again. So no can do. Uh, finally, the Pastel Dreams from Gimme Glow Cosmetics has dropped, and I thought I was going to get this, but then I did my ranking my pastel palettes video last month, and I decided I don't need another pastels palette. I, I just don't. I have 10 palettes that can do that. Well, nine now that I've decluttered my makeup collection because that Beauty Bay Pastels palette really just had to go. But I feel that once you have good pastels, you don't need that many. So I, I'm going to pass up on this one. I really re still want to try Gimme Glow, but I think they need to come out with something that really sets my heart on fire and it just hasn't really happened yet. Now remember I said when I talked about the Hermes blushes that I was intrigued by another bougie brand that's coming out with blush. Oh yeah, Miss Pat McGrath is coming out with blushes. How expensive are these? Doesn't say. 
should be out uh, end of May, so these aren't out yet. And there also seems to be more out in like the Divine Rose collection. Uh, Venus in Floors Lux Quad, that looks really, really stunning. That seems to be a limited edition. Yes, Pat McGrath is definitely a brand that, like Zoeva and Charlotte Tilbury, I'm going to sort of file away in the back of my hand. And in a few months time, I'm definitely going to make sure I have some budget ready to go and splurge on some Pat McGrath stuff. So, but not anytime soon. Makeup Revolution is expanding their Disney collection to now include The Little Mermaid. Just thought you should know. I'm not buying this though. I don't, I'm really over Makeup Revolution, so not gonna, not gonna get it. Something I was super excited of, uh, about, for some reason, now that I am capping my spend on eyeshadow palettes, I seem to just have shifted my focus to blush because Too Faced is releasing the Love Flush watercolor blushes. So they're bringing back their Love Flush line, the ones in the hard compact, but now they seem to be doing more like pastel -y shades. Um, and these are already out on Cult Beauty, so I should be able to buy these. So I'm gonna have to look into these. Again, I'm in no rush to buy these, but I know that I will definitely check these out and then buy myself a shade that I love the best because the Love Flush blushes from Too Faced is one of my favorite blush formulas. So I hope these are, are as good as the originals are. Uh, By Beauty has come out with cream blush, the Daycation Whipped Cream Blush. And I just thought, I looked at this packaging and I just didn't understand it. So even though I'm really into trying cream blush and liquid blush at the moment, the packaging is just too weird for me. Uh, Fenty, is this Fenty? Yeah, Fenty Beauty Eye Brightener. I'm not sure, what is this supposed to do? Oh, an under eye brightener. Ah, so it's like a concealer for your under eye. Hmm, do I need a separate concealer for that? I don't think so. However, this does promise to be hydrating and brightening, brightening and concealing all at the same time, so. I have drier under eyes, on me everything creases, so if this is a hydrating product that can help with that, I might be intrigued. I actually want to do a full face of Fenty, so if this is out in Europe, I might be able to snatch one up if I do buy myself some more Fenty stuff. Okay, uh, Juvia's Place, we have the bronze collection, and uh, we also have some more Juvia's Place coming up in a minute because they also came out with some blushes in a similar vein. This I'm very intrigued with. Um, this and the blushes, I have to say. It seems to come in a light enough shade for me, that's for sure. However, I haven't, like at the moment, I'm not really eyeing up anything from Juvia's and it's just not really worth it for me to only buy one product. Uh, because then with the shipping and all the fees and etc, etc. So I want Juvia's Place to come out with a few things. So I think I won't be placing a Juvia's Place order until like the fall time. Uh, maybe for Black Friday when they do a bit of a discount. That I might want to do. But at this moment, I don't really need to rush to get this. Because I have plenty of bronzers to try, so I don't need this. Urban Decay has come out with a loose version of their all-nighter setting powder. Unfortunately, the all-nighter products are very much geared towards oily skin, and so they're not for me. I really want Urban Decay to do a good powder for, like, dry skin. They are currently not doing that. And also, the all-nighter setting spray is a little too drying for me, which is why I always use, use it sparingly. Colourpop, like the eyeshadow they have come out with, they are now also doing face palettes, palettes that look very similarly, but it's just four blush shades. I, I don't know. I don't really get this. Because this, is, this reminds me a lot of that BH Cosmetics launch last year. What were they called? Like the vanilla cream and like blush palettes that they did, but then with square pans. Because some of these seem to have two, sh like most of these seem to have two shades that are pretty much identical. Like, why, why do I need this? I don't know. Um, Charlotte Tilbury has come out with some new lipsticks as well. This is why I, at some point, want to try some more Charlotte Tilbury, because I've tried a lot of their Matte Revolution lipsticks, but none of the other ones, so I'm not sure if I want to try Hot Lips or maybe from 
This line, I'm not sure if these are limited edition or not, but anyways, I want to try some more Charlotte, but not until later in the year. Um, and then we have a new brand called Our Darling. And according to Indie Mood, this is a brand that is inspired by Victorian morning rituals. If you know anything about me, then you know that my favorite era is like Victorian England. So it has my aesthetic written all over it too. It is a little bit deep though. And that I'm saying that as I'm wearing like a navy, like dark navy smoky eye, but like for me, I can pull this off every once in a while, but I don't want to wear it too often because it's a little too much for work. So for me, this would just, it's probably not perfect. And I think if I think of my uh, ColourPop Baroque palette and my Wine and Only, I think if I were to fuse those together, that I can build this palette myself. So don't need it. Uh, Christian Louboutin is uh, expanding their um, their makeup line, it seems, with some face and eye palettes. I'm pretty sure some bougie people will love this, but for me, I don't really need this. It's just, I'm not it's super into like super duper luxury brands. And uh, this is just not really something that really appeals to me. It doesn't speak to me enough. Now, I hope you guess this one because the brand that is coming out with some new products that I do want to buy is Lisa Eldridge. She's coming out with some new products. So she's coming out with a highlighter as well as a cream blush or liquid blush. And she's coming out with more uh, shades in her cream formula lipstick as well as more shades in her gloss. So I'm thinking she's probably going to release a video soon where she shows all the products. She usually does. And these products should be out on May 15th. So that's uh, next Saturday. So I will definitely be snatching up some new lipsticks. I also hope she's restocking some of her velvet blur lipsticks or what are they called? Velvet, the velvets, whatever. Um, because they're, I want to complete my collection and maybe also buy a few of those cream lipsticks. If she brings back the Go Lightly shade in the cream lipstick formula, I do really like that. But I was going to buy that as a gloss. So I'm not sure yet, but I want to see what's on the website and then like place an order for sure. And then I think a launch from Kiko that I think is so cute. They come out, they're coming out with this fruit inspired collection for summer, which I think is a really, really clever move. These products look really fun. Um, knowing Kiko, these products are just going to be the size of your head though, because Kiko has an issue with just making really, really large project products. So I'm going to pass up, but that bronzer looks quite interesting. And I think the packaging looks really fun. Oh, well, don't need it. Um, new Birdstone palette that is out from for May from BH is the Emerald. And this does not seem to have a pressed glitter, or am I wrong? Are they letting the pressed glitter idea go? Because if they are then doing a color story for my Birdstone, which is not until July, uh, then I might pick that up if it's interesting enough. But yeah, yeah this, is not, this is not something I need. This is, no, I just don't. Benefit has released the Hula Glow, or it's about to be released, I'm not sure. Uh, of course, it's probably going to take a while for Benefit to release this over here. And I wished that Benefit would do this then immediately in the other two Hula shades that they do, but I haven't seen anything about that. So this, I'm not, or are they? Oh, they do seem to do a light version. No, no, that's true. That's not true. They're just doing glow as if it's like a different shade. So they, they they don't do the glow one in like a glow light. They only do a hula glow. And I'm like, so since hula, hula itself is much too dark for me, I know this will be too dark too. So not applicable to fair skin tones. Glam Light is coming out with a red velvet cupcake palette, which also comes in an oven. You know by now, I think, how I feel about Glam Light eyeshadow. I know I will not be trying anything anytime soon from this brand. It just wasn't my cup of tea. Sigma is coming out with the Ambiance Collection, which looks like a face palette, glosses, brushes, and a new palette, which features warm tone neutrals. Next! 
Huda Beauty is coming out with new highlighter palettes, the Glow Obsessions. Again, like with a lot of face palettes, I know I won't, I know I won't use this. I know I won't. So for me, even though it does come in a ver fair enough shade, that's for sure, I know I won't be reaching for something like this. I don't need four shades of highlighter in a palette. I just don't. Then something I'm super excited for actually is the Zara announcement. So Zara is extending their makeup line. You could already buy lipsticks, but they, now they are redoing the line completely. And they're now coming out with, with face palettes and eyeshadow and the lipstick range has been revamped and there's nail polish, maybe some brushes. I don't know, I would have to see this. Um, they are probably, however, going to only be releasing this online. It does say here that it will be available in select stores, but it will probably only be bigger Zara stores. So not sure it's going to be out anywhere where I live, but I'll check it out and see if they have anything that I might be interested in. Then Juvia's Place announced blushes as well. So apart from bronzers, they now also do the blush collection. There's also an eyeshadow palette, like a six pan mini uh, coming out here too. But I do think that the blush collection doesn't come in as many shades as the bronzer does. So the bronzer comes in like six different shades, but the blushes only come in two. So I want them to extend this for sure, so that there are some shades that I would be interesting in, because those two sh darker shades are much too dark, and the two lighter shades are just not unique enough that I would really want to play with those. Natasha Denona. The Zendo palette, we knew she was going to be releasing the mini Zendo or the mini Retro as a larger palette, and she chose to do the Zendo first. I'm still hoping that the Retro is going to happen, because this palette, it has the teals I love, and then it has warm tones, and I hate that because I would never put a teal with a warm tone. I, they can work, for sure. Um, but this is like Naked Wild West vibes all over again. I want, I want, the, I want the mini retro, Natasha. Uh, give me that. Like these teals and then the mini retro turn into a larger palette. That would be lovely. But yeah, there are six shades in this palette I would buy it for and the other nine I wouldn't care about. Natasha Denona is much too expensive to be that frivolous. So we're not going to do that. Towards the end of this month, we should be getting a Urban Decay and Prince collection. Not sure yet what this, this is going to look like. It's just been announced. Uh, Prince is one of my faves. So Urban Decay is one of my faves. I'm really, really stoked to see what they come up with. However, this being Urban Decay and how wrong they have been getting certain things lately, I don't think this is necessarily going to be what I hope hope for. I mean, when I think of prints, I think of purple. And so there better be a lot of purple in this collection, Urban Decay, because else I'm not buying it. Um, Revolution is dropping a new brand, Read Love by Revolution. I already told you that I'm not really into Makeup Revolution. They can be releasing new brands left and right, but I'm not buying it. Uh, Cleona is starting to slowly announce some new products as well. They should have a collab coming too, and they are now going to be doing a mini version of their stained glass palette, which I'm happy with. I still want to buy some Cleona stained glass pa uh, eyeshadows. That's for sure. That's definitely another one of those things that are like on the back burner. At some point this year, I would like to buy myself some more Cleona singles. But Cleona is one of those brands that has also just really, really suffered from their popularity. Um, so a lot of it is on back order and you, everything is out of stock. So that's a bit of a shame. Then M Cosmetics, the brand I just talked about at the start of the video, having bought some of their stuff, is now doing some like cushion highlighter. Interesting, I'm sure. Uh, but like, yeah, now that I know how expensive they are in terms of shipping, I know I won't be buying from them anytime soon. And with the palettes I just, like with the products I just bought, I brought everything from the brand that I was interested in in one go. So I know I won't be buying from them anytime soon. Adept Cosmetics, this I spotted just this, uh, this, just this morning, is coming out with a very dark, grungy, jewel-toned color story called the Kodan, 
Godin, I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, pretty, but like some other palettes, Adept is really expensive for me to buy, and their palettes are quite expensive too, so again, not something I have necessarily really looked into yet, but Adept is doing some nice things, so they might be a brand that I try this year, but yeah, I think... I think I'm good to I'm good to go for now. And then last but not least, this is the final one I want to talk about. Are you still with me? Victoria Beckham is coming out with the matte bronzing brick, which is a bronzing duo. And in terms of luxury brands, I have actually been uh, pretty intrigued with what Victoria Beckham makeup does. So maybe I want to try them. I think they're on Cold Beauty or French Sephora. So I can buy them in Europe without like paying a premium in terms of shipping. Um, but I, I have to I have to really sort of look into this brand and sort of look for reviews and see what products are good and which aren't because they are pricey. But yeah, I just I'm not sure why, but all of a sudden I'm like, hmm, that might be a brand I want to try at some point in the future. But again, not anytime soon. So from everything we've just talked about, Lisa Eldridge, for sure. The Nabla Skin uh, Realist Skin Tint, that's for sure. Too Faced Blushes. Those are like my top three, like, would like to get ASAP kind of releases. And then what's going on, like, the back burner, what I'm gonna get a little bit later if I can get it, the Maybelline Tinted Serum, the Pat McGrath Blushes, and I think that's pretty much it. So out of all of these releases, the only thing I really, really want to try are those five things, and everything else, I'm like, thank you, next. So I hope I wasn't too salty for you in this video today, so thank you very much for watching. It was a long one, but I had a lot to update you on. So I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make three new videos a week, and I hope to see you in my next one. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.